Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, December 10th, 2010, and I'm Darko. Uh, welcome back to part two of this news bulletin. I covered mostly uh, Big Brother and the economy in the first part. Um, so if you want to go um, check out those articles, um, you can in part one. Uh, part two, I'm going to finish up with the economy, as I stated before, and then I'm going to move into some eugenics, some very interesting eugenics news articles coming up here. Uh, new listeners, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. And I guess uh, my normal or usual listeners, uh, who I appreciate so much for subscribing and for checking out my videos, um, I also put some polls on there uh, from time to time. You can go in there and vote, uh, along with uh, some recent uh, uh, links that I put up there with some pictures, uh, chemtrails that I've taken around my house and that. Uh, so anyways, we're going to continue here. This uh, next article up is less than a full service city, and they're referring to Detroit, of course, who is, uh, shit, a year ago I posted a, a, a video about 50% unemployment in Detroit. So, I mean, not not going too well up there for uh for those people up there. Plan for Detroit would pull resources and population from blighted districts. It says more than 20% of Detroit's 139 square miles could go without key municipal services under a new plan being developed for the city with as few as seven neighborhoods seeing as meriting the city's full resources. It says those details outlined by Detroit planning officials uh, this week offer the clearest picture yet of how Mayor Bing intends to execute what has become his signature program, reconfiguring Detroit to reflect its declining population and fiscal health. Yet the blueprint still leaves large legal and financial questions unresolved and... Um, it says here, until now, the mayor and his staff have spoken mostly in generalities about the problem, stressing the need for community input and pledging to a skeptical public that no resident would be forced to move. So see what this is about, guys? Look at this full image. Wow, that's spooky, man. That looks like a future FEMA camp, dude. Or possibly, uh, this is just me uh, kind of having fun here looking at this picture, although it's not going to be fun if people have to go into these things. Uh, makeshift kind of uh, uh, uh uh, FEMA camp slash uh, uh, mental ward. That's what it looks like for people like me <laughs> or anybody that talks about what I'm talking about. That's where you're going to go in the future and while all the other plebs go to the uh, to the uh, Superdome uh, stadiums that are in every major city. Well, not every major city, but they're in a lot of major cities. Uh, they'll go there. They'll get processed. Uh, those will be the greens, and then they'll go back out into society and, and consume and spend and work and slave away, and uh, they'll torture us uh, until we basically capitulate and then put us on drugs and drug us up and lobotomize us so we can't speak, remember our own name anymore. And then the Reds, they'll just pick them up at 4 in the morning and kill them. That's all, of course, just uh, a theory, but hey, it seems like that's a, that would be the most efficient way of processing slaves uh, in mass in a short period of time, right? So, uh, yeah, they're talking about being forced to move, and I just covered that in, um, I just covered that in, uh, uh, what is it, last, week, uh, last week's video about Russia and their mayor uh, for, are going to be forcing uh, uh, most Soviet, uh, not Soviet, I'm sorry, uh, Russians, but uh, most Russians, they're going to be taking them from rural areas and enforcing them into cities. And uh, it's going to be the first uh, time that uh, that's ever been done since uh, since Stalin had uh, had it ordered, and you can be rest assured that's going to be for eugenics purposes. Spain Prime Minister Madrid Barcelona airports to be privatized. I covered this a uh, couple of videos ago. I just wanted to plug it in here because it goes in with the economy. Uh, the Spanish also own a toll road right here in my neck of the woods in northern Indiana. The toll road. Um, with a whole I pass thing, and so it's own, our toll road here is owned by a foreign company from Spain. It says the Spanish government plans to privatize the country's top two airports as part of a series of measures seeking to jumpstart anemic economic growth. Wow! So I wonder if that's what they're going to tell people here in the United States uh, when they privatize all their water, uh, their water municipalities, and uh, other types of um, departments and that when they privatize them all. On, and they're going to basically pri they're going to sell it to them on the cheap. They're going to take all your tax dollars and fix them up as they're going broke, and then they're going to sell them to the private companies like that, and then they're going to jack up your rates. 
All right, so next up is uh, IRS considers new amnesty for overseas tax cheats. This is no, to no surprise at all. Um, Internal Revenue Service is seriously considering a new program of reduced penalties for overseas tax cheats who turn themselves in. And this is, of course, all of these little tax havens were made for the elites. They were made for the people that are scamming you, defrauding you, and robbing you as a citizen and a consumer. Um, and so these little these little um, havens are made for them, but they don't like the slaves that are middle management that are maybe have a million dollars um, net worth uh, to be um, trying to avoid uh, this uh, non-free market uh, uh, government uh, steered, you know, basically economy uh, where everybody is taxed for every single business transaction that you conduct, right? So they want to try to have a little extra change in their pocket um, after the tax man comes and rapes them. And uh, so they're coming after the little guys, see? They're not coming after the big boys. But uh, said so after 15,000 tax sheets came clean last year as part of an IRS offer of reduced penalties, this is an <laughs> and no jail time for people who turn themselves in. IRS Commissioner Doug Schulman told an international tax conference Thursday that the program was so successful the agency is considering another one. That's because everyone's scared shitless of the IRS. I mean, dude, there's people that will kill themselves because of the IRS, man. And these people are ruthless. <laughs> They're ruthless, dude. They have a they have a manual that's like uh, ten times the size of the Bible. And what does that tell you? They're more more important than God. I mean, I, I, honestly, that's why they say death and taxes. But hey, if you want statism and you want to say, well, we gotta we gotta just support it. It's the only thing that we can do, even though we've never really tried no government before, except for maybe the indigenous people who were slaughtered by governments. And maybe as cavemen were who lived in nice little small tribes, and because they didn't live in big, huge cities, they didn't have to suffer plagues. But hey, um, I guess let's just keep doing it, man. Let the violence and the coercion and the force uh, uh, continue, right? Let the bashing of the heads and, the, and pay your taxes, death and taxes continue. And if you live long enough, past 60, past all the eugenics that's carried out on you, maybe by then, you know, you'll, you'll start to see what I'm seeing, which is... Um, a stateless society is the way to go, and uh, you know you can do it peacefully. I think, um, if, like I mentioned in my last video, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, agree, if you're gonna be uh, uh, on the fence, or if you're a big statist, or you're even for small government, um, that basically all of this will continue unless people start to, you know, really start thinking outside the box. That's the only way I can put it. I don't know how long I'm going to make these videos for. I'm 30 years old, um, and I just got this fire in me to try to get spread this word. Um, I put all these articles out there because I want you to see what I'm seeing. I, you know, I have a certain perception, and hopefully some people can, uh, you know, uh, share that perception with me. And in doing that, you can see that I'm offering solutions, and my solution is, is nonviolence and it involves no government. Um, you can be a spiritual person. I'm not promoting atheism or anything like that. I'm just, whatever, man. It's just, there's got to be something else. So I'm going to move on. And um, it says here, OIA considers dumping TSA scanners. It says leaders of Orlando International Airport could start taking steps to replace TSA scan scanners with a private company during a meeting Wednesday. And it says uh, WFTV has been following the uproar over TSA's controversial full body scans and intrusive pat-downs. Orlando International Airport is already making the switch to a private screening company. It said it would bring a huge change at OII, but uh, passengers might not even notice. Next one up is from Press TV, and it says Iran and China discuss major rail project. That's pretty big news. Iran says it's negotiating with China on an express rail line. A project that is to run from the Iranian capital to the northeastern holy city of Mashhad, a major attraction of Shia pilgrims. And this sucker is supposed to go 150 miles per hour, I believe. And uh, next one up here is GCC urged to boost gold reserves. Uh, GCC states uh, should boost their foreign reserve holdings. Sorry, I had a trouble <laughs> just pronouncing that, of gold to help shield their billions of dollars of assets from turbulence in global currency markets, say economists at the Dubai International Financial Center Authority. So that's also big news. Uh, next one up, milit uh, military. Middle classes should donate more to charity, says Hunt, the millionaire minister. A millionaire minister 
has risked angering the middle classes by lambasting uh, a better off for not giving enough money to charity. Jeremy Hunt, the culture secretary, culture secretary. Wow, that's really nice. I wonder if he works for the culture industry. It says here, also believes that they should do more to help their communities by volunteering. See, is volunteering through statism, and that's why, you know, philanthropy, that's eugenics. These are all little words, you know, volunteerism. Are you going to volunteer? Volunteerism in, in a stateless society is possible. You voluntarily conduct business. You do things voluntarily. You're not forced. You are not. Uh, don't have a gun pointed at your head. I mean, we're at the point now where where you, there's so much double think out there that people will actually believe that there's a thing, such thing as uh, compulsory voluntary service. That's an oxymoron, guys. If you don't, if you, I mean, if, I don't know if you've heard that before. Compulsory voluntary national service. Uh, remember that phrase because you're probably going to hear it again soon. It says, more U.S. billionaires pledge to give away their wealth. So no better way to segue into eugenics uh, than the philanthropist slash eugenicist. And uh, once they hit a certain net worth, oh, i got to start killing people off. That's basically um, what they talk about because um, philanthropy is basically eugenics. It's all about calling the population and um, and uh, uh, shaping society uh, in such in Basically, to sh it's basically shaping the society that is based off a select few of elites. And trust me, they're not very human friendly. They don't like humans. They don't like people. I don't even know if they like themselves. Next one up says, armed services are urged to stock kitchens with Gulf seafood. Just amazing stuff here, guys. Navy Secretary Ray Mubbas, uh, who doubles as President Barack Obama's point man on the Gulf Coast oil spill, is pressing America's armed services to consume as much Gulf seafood as possible. Uh, I couldn't believe this when I, uh, when I read it, but it said he was making the point that we should start buying Gulf seafood. So be prepared for uh, propaganda and disinformation and basically just flat out lies to be coming out, uh, attacking your mind, telling you that the Gulf seafood is all safe when it's not. I've read reports about um, it's, it's not cleaned up. All of that oil is sunk to the bottom um, along with the Corexit that pushed it to the bottom. So you got chemicals and oil just sitting there and it can possibly be good for uh, all of the little shellfish or whatever is on the bottom. Um, of the ocean floor in the Gulf, and it says they're going to be hit, they're going to spend BP is going to spend thirty million dollars uh, and more in federal dollars to reassure restaurants and markets across the country that the Gulf seafood is safe. So there you go. Uh, next one up here says U.S. soldiers turn to diet pills liposuction to meet weight standards. Um, we're going to keep moving here because we're going to run short on time. Wi-Fi threat to trees rooted in shady stats. This article ticks me off. Please go read this. Um, there was already an article that came out, and it was basically about studies, Dutch studies, that uh, found Wi-Fi is uh, threatening these trees. 70% of urban trees are sick, up 10% from a few, few years earlier. And what sickens me, guys, is that there's no mention of the actual health effects on people. Not even mentioned about people. You know, it's all about the trees, and they're like, well, no, this is about people. I think we should be concerned about this and not just disregard these people's statistics, these scientists. But no, go in there and check it out. Complete disinformation and propaganda to uh, basically uh, uh, kind of cover up, do damage control, facts, fix facts fixing, as they call it, uh, before this news gets out. Because this is probably the one of the biggest news right now besides those cell phones causing cancer and emitting radiation and body scanners emitting radi radiation. you got these Wi-Fi towers emitting radiation. And if, they can, uh, if they're going to harm uh, plants and trees, damn it, they're going to harm you too. I don't know how people, you know, have that disconnect with that with that issue. But, hey, God bless us, man. I hope we make it through alive, dude. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Canadian Public Health Association, they're setting a stage for an immunization uh, registry. And it goes on and talks about children, and then it says all people. So if you don't care about the children, or, uh, if, if you don't want to do a vaccine registry, you don't care about children. Mother wins cash payout for damage for her son who suffered MMR vaccine jab. Myths and facts study verifies that there is no value in any flu vaccine. Come check this out. Link will be posted. Taking bone drugs may give you cancer. New study says uh, shows radiation exposure in middle age causes cancer. Most women are skipping mammograms. 
National Health Service promotes mobile sex advice for children. U.S. life expectancy falls. Thank you, everybody.